Makeup looks pretty, but it leaves a pretty sizable mess behind. And interestingly enough, before I got into doing these videos, I really didn't have much interest in heavy makeup. I mean, I wear mascara, eyeliner, eyeshadow every now and then, and lipstick for special occasions, but that was pretty much it. However, as time went on and we started doing more and more of these videos, and more importantly, when we purchased a high definition camera, makeup quickly became a necessity. You see, high definition cameras pick up every single flaw in someone's face. So since we got the camera, I've been using more makeup. Not too long ago, I started taking makeup lessons with a lovely lady here in Toronto named Vicki Miller, and she's a professional makeup artist. So recently she was over at my house teaching me how to do this killer smoky eye, and I asked her for some of her best makeup cleaning tips that she could share with me so I could share them with you. She generously obliged, and now I get to tell you all about them. So what I've done is combine some of Vicky's tips with a few of my own to create an amazing list of 11, not 10, because I, I just couldn't get rid of one. I, they were all just so good. So 11 cleaning tips that will surely help you out when it comes to makeup. Drying your brushes. Particularly important for brushes with wood handles. These guys need to dry on an angle or vertically. After I clean a brush, I roll up a washcloth and I lay the brushes on top of the roll, tilting the bristled end ever so slightly downward. That way, the water won't absorb back into the wood. Another great way to avoid water damage and to quickly dry your brushes is to hang them on a towel bar. And you do this by using hair elastics. All you have to do is twist the elastic into an eight, then wrap it around the bar and slip the brush through the two loops that you've created. It's so easy and it works like a charm. Clean your brushes on a regular basis. Keeping your brushes clean is not only important for the longevity of the brush itself, because you know we're spending enough money on them, but remember, if you're using these tools like I am to apply your makeup, to your skin, which isn't perfect, <laughs> and if your brushes are full of dirt, guess where all of that's going to end up? Cleaning brushes after every use is something that Vicky does, but she's a professional makeup artist, so for the rest of us, we can clean our brushes ideally on a weekly basis. Change your mascara monthly. Okay, admittedly, I don't do this. So when Vicky told this to me, I asked her why. She said that mascara is the fastest way to spread an eye infection and that changing it regularly is crucial. Now to her defense, she is a makeup artist and works with a lot of different people, although she does use those disposable applicators. So I can definitely understand why she's changing it once a month. But here's what I do know about mascara. It dries out quickly, especially if it's pumped frequently. I change mine every two to three months, but on that note, if I get sick or if I get an eye infection or if my sister comes over and starts using my makeup, then I think I would just go ahead and get a new one. That makes perfect sense to me. So I suppose for the more germ aware people out there, you can change it monthly and for everyone else, you can stick with the lower frequency so long as your health doesn't change or you don't have any unwanted intruders getting up into your mascara. Disinfect your eyeshadows. Sanitizing your eyeshadows sounds pretty strange, am I right? But let's say your best friend borrows your makeup or you use it while you're sick. If you don't wanna throw out the eyeshadow but you wanna kill any lingering germs which may be festering, here's all you need to do. Simply skim the top layer of the shadow using a simple tissue and then give it a spritz with rubbing alcohol and just let it dry. This won't actually harm the shadow, but it will kill the germs. Use a makeup spatula. If you have a pot of moisturizer or gel eyeliner or any makeup product that you have to use by digging it out with your finger, then you'll be better served using a small makeup spatula. 
They're inexpensive and readily available. Admittedly, I've never heard of them, at least before Vicky came to my house. So I've put a link to one below that I found on Amazon. It's actually the same one that I just ordered because I don't yet have one. All you have to do is take out a small amount of product using the spatula, then place it either on the back of your hand or a small palette, or sometimes I even rip a piece of cardboard and just use that, and work from there. And then when you need to refill it, you just use your spatula to scoop some out and then put it back on your palette. It's quite simple and it keeps your products nice and clean and of course, disinfected. Easily repair smashed powder. This is a really fun and easy tip, especially if you hear your heart breaking at the same moment that you drop your expensive compact on the floor. Even though it isn't strictly makeup cleaning advice, it's still really good information. So I've dropped my makeup plenty of times and I've seen my expensive eyeshadows smash to pieces. I pick them all up and I just sort of let them sit in the pan and the whole situation gets messy and my makeup doesn't turn out as it should. But there's a magical fix for this and it works for any compact powdered makeup. You can thank me later. All you need to do is assemble the pieces back together as best you can, and it should be fairly simple if you drop the container and all the product is contained. And then you just spray it, here's my imaginary sprayer, with some rubbing alcohol and you let it dry. It works and it saves you money. This, believe me, is a great tip. Clean an eyelash curlers pads weekly. Eyelash curlers are so funny because they terrify men and quite frankly, I can't blame them because they look like medieval contraptions that are designed for the sole purpose to pluck your eyeball right out of your socket. On that note, the little pads, these guys right here, that actually clamp down on your lash do tend to get nasty buildup over time. So you wanna be sure to clean them as much as you clean your brushes and other makeup items. It's really easy to clean too. What you need to do is just pour some rubbing alcohol on a cotton pad and simply wipe the pads, these little things here, clean. It's also a good idea to purchase refill pads for your brand of curler and replace those every three months. I see them in drugstores all the time. Protect your clothes from makeup when you put a top or dress on. Always consider prevention. This is the message behind tip number eight. Protect your clothing when applying makeup by wearing a robe or something similar over your garment. Sometimes I'll do my makeup before getting dressed. And my sister-in-law, hi Lisa, actually told me that you can tie a silk or similar material, I don't know if I'd actually use silk, but some sort of scarf around your face while putting on your top, A, to allow it to slip on easily, but B, to avoid smearing your makeup all over the garment. So you probably wouldn't wanna use your nicest scarf, but this is a really good suggestion. In fact, if you've ever seen our video called How to Clean a Cutting Board, you'll see that I'm in this great white turtleneck. And the funny thing is that shirt was actually meant for another video, but I got makeup all over the shirt when I quickly put it on, so. Again, same reason I should have used a scarf. That is an awesome idea. Removing makeup stains. When it comes to removing makeup stains, like any stain, the answer is it's complicated, much like a Facebook status. The truth is there are zillions of combinations of products, materials, and other variables that go into creating a stain. They're very unique. So some good general tips are helpful, but perhaps it's best to research your particular stain combination as backup. That's why a lot of people don't like advising on stains. They're kind of scary. Now, if you do get a stain, you can use dish liquid as a pre-treater to remove the spot from the garment. If you use a little makeup sponge, like those little triangles, it will help absorb the stain. That way you're not patting it into the garment. And you can also use a little cleaning toothbrush with soft bristles to gently buff out the stain. Rinse and repeat. Many people swear by using makeup remover as a way of getting rid of makeup stains. This is a great idea, but you have to keep in mind that many makeup removers are actually oil-based. So you'll need to rinse the garment very well to remove the oil as well as the stain. So I'd recommend following that up with dish liquid. 
Finally, powdered oxygen bleach, also known as OxyClean, will work well for makeup stain removal. So follow the product label as well as the fabric care label on the garment and the product should do the heavy lifting for you. Cleaning your lipstick. So let's say you're sick and right before it hit you, you donned the hottest shade of lipstick. Or let's say your friend borrowed your lipstick and you're a little bit queasy about the whole situation because you don't know who she was hanging. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. All you need to do is turn your lipstick tube up slightly and wipe off the top layer of lipstick just with a tissue. Then pour a small amount of rubbing alcohol, or if you want to be extra classy, you can use vodka, into a glass and dip the exposed lipstick into the alcohol for 30 seconds. Then remove it and gently dab the alcohol off and allow it to dry. This is harmless to the lipstick and will keep it clean and in good shape. Cleaning your makeup brushes. And finally, as a quick bonus point, I couldn't let this one go. I just wanna talk quickly about brush cleaning for a minute. As many of you know, I did a homemade brush cleaning recipe video a long time ago. But I have to say, after talking to Vicky, I've kind of changed my tune on that. In fact, I feel that the best way to go is using just some mild soap, like an antibacterial hand soap, or even some baby shampoo, and that's it. If you're sick or you've shared your brushes, you can add a little bit of rubbing alcohol, I'm sure you're noticing a trend here, to the mix. I don't think purchasing a brush cleaner or even going to the trouble of making your own is necessary. Well, there you have it, 11 amazing makeup cleaning tips. But the show's not over yet. What we want to do is create the largest database of makeup cleaning tips on the internet. But I can't do that all by myself. You know, I've got a day job, so I need you guys to help me out. If you have any great makeup cleaning tips or makeup clean up tips, please drop them in the comment box below because I know other people skim through those comments just like I do and they learn a lot. So help us out. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, remember to hit the subscribe button, which is right down there to catch all of our great cleaning videos, including tips, tricks, product reviews, and a whole bunch of other great cleaning stuff. And of course, you get to be a member of the Clean My Space community at no charge. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.